Hey guys, today I'm going to be teaching you how to care for Pac-Man frogs. Um, as you can see here, I have two, uh, both albino. Um, these frogs are very, very easy to care for. Um, literally, uh, you can buy them for, I think, like, albinos can range from, like, $20 to $30. You can, you can buy them as a little quarter size. You can even get them at pet stores, but I don't recommend getting anything at a pet store just because you're supporting a very bad fundraiser, so, or whatever, a very bad cause, whatever you want to call that whole thing. So, yeah. But here is my enclosures. As you can see, they're in tubs. Uh, as babies, you can keep them in 10 gallons, and even as adults, they can stay in 10 gallons. Males get around two and a half to four inches, and females can get four and a half to seven inches. So depending on what species or what uh, gender you have, it can depend how big it is. So um, I would never, as adults, put my finger in their cages because they're very aggressive. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute. But for substrate, um, most I'm just put in front of the lens. Um, but so I just keep in Rubbermaid tubs because it keeps the humidity up, and as you can see here. The substrate stays really nice and packed, which is what they need because when they burrow, they like to be kind of packed in there. As you can see, they're both like in little dens. So for that, I recommend uh, Eco Earth. That's what it is. Sorry, I couldn't remember. I just recommend Eco Earth. Just just use Eco Earth or okay, coconut coconut bedding type thing. So that'll be perfect. Just something that holds moisture. Um, no barky sub no barky stuff. Like don't use cypress mulch or anything. It's just, you know, not not good. And as you can see, I have live plants in the enclosures. I mean, it's pothos, so I mean, it really thrives anywhere. So it thrives perfectly in here. I have water dishes, even though they don't even use it. Um, but, you know, just in case they want a little soaking, they can go get in here. Um, these are not handling species. No frogs like to be handled because the oils on your hands irritate their skin. So minimize handling for these guys. If you want, like, a pet that just sits and you can look at it and watch it eat, which is very cool... Um, watching these guys eat is one of the coolest things. If you watch my feeding videos, you would know what that looks like. If not, here's a video. So as you saw there, they do eat mice. As babies, they can eat insects like crickets, worms. Uh, Maybe even a pinky mice, depending on what size. Uh, literally, these guys can eat more than what they look like, uh, more than their size. So, you know, you really don't have to worry about that. Um, as babies, I'd recommend feeding every day, every other day. And then as adults, like these guys, I feed them two times a week, Sunday and Wednesday. Um, that's when they get their mice. They'll eat mice or sometimes even worms. Or if I have crickets, I'll just throw crickets in there any time through the week. And that's how they keep their good size. Um, like, I'll take one out. Like I said, I don't handle these guys. But... Just to give you a little, you see how good the size is on these, so I'm going to put them back in there. This one, that one's not aggressive. See, I put my finger right here, and he's not aggressive at all. But this one, if I put my finger in front of his face, he would attack. So let me, let me demonstrate this for you right now. All right, so I'm going to put these tongs in front of its face and uh, see if it'll bite them. Just to show you how crazy the feeding response is, just like if I put anything moving, it'll try to eat it. Like if I try to come over here... I realized that this week when I was going to clean their enclosures and I put my hand literally like right here and he jumped out and got my got my thumb his whole mouth was up to here like my whole thumb was in his mouth to right here so that does kind of go to show how aggressive these guys can be and it didn't feel good he held on for like five five minutes and it was horrible so yeah but uh, so you got the substrate the water hide the food temperatures now Temperatures at room degrees. Room, you know, 65 to 85. Don't go any lower, don't go any higher, and that's perfect. You know, my room usually stays between 60 and 80 in the, in the winter to summer, so it's perfect. Uh, I keep them on my rack system, and there is heat tape, so I do have that in the back that just rises up on their enclosures to keep a little bit of humidity in there. And then if the substrate is really dry, I'll spray it, but in the tubs, it rarely gets dry. But if you're keeping it in a 10 gallon tank, you are going to have to spray it a lot so it keeps this nice compact moist moisture. And you are going to want like moisture around the tub just for good humidity. Um, for lighting, if you're using a tank, don't use like a really hot light. Like when I used to keep these guys in a tank, I have like a UVB light on them and UVB lights produce like no heat. So yeah, if you have heat, it's going to dry their skin out and it's just not going to be good. It's not going to be healthy. So if you want a light, just use a UVB light or like even a fish tank light to go on top. Those those are easy, just so you can view your animal. 
Um, but yeah, so in all, these guys are really awesome pets, good for beginners. Uh, just watch your fingers, they just don't handle them, um, and just keep the humidity up for them. Uh, and I mean, when I say humidity, basically just keep the substrate so it's like nice and moist and you know, it's it, like it'll stay compact. So that concludes this video. I hope this did help you. If you have any questions, go to my um, Reptile Instagram account, ReptileLovers98. I'll put the name in the description. Go ask me questions on there, direct message me. That way we can talk and I can help you with these guys. But yeah, so thanks for watching this video. Rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video.